hello good afternoon people beautiful people it's been a while oh my goodness i hope you guys are doing fine i'm here live again we're going to be talking about um an interesting topic so topic so today we're going to be talking about the commonly asked questions about the citizenship process the most frequently asked questions about becoming a u.s citizen about the process the process of becoming a u.s citizen join us everyone okay so the first question that we usually get is or i usually get is do i need a lawyer to apply for u.s citizenship do i need a lawyer to apply for u.s citizenship so you don't need a lawyer but it's very highly recommended to um have a lawyer for the process so the uscis forms are available to be downloaded for free you know they're on the uscis website okay um they're free yes but the mistakes that you can make are not free you can freely and of course while you're filling out the form and making mistakes or you know writing incriminating answers or whatever there's no there's not going to be an alarm that's going to beep and say ping be careful no it's it feels easy it feels free you know you'll submit it but the repercussions or the problems that come with that type of thing will come down the down, down the line later welcome guys if you join in um drop me a comment let me know where you're watching from so yes um it's not obligatory to use an attorney when you're filing your n400 application but it's very highly 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 recommended and you need to make sure that you know you are using somebody who's licensed of course that people known as notarios these are people that are um you know they don't have uh, license uh, you know legal licenses so they don't really understand um the, the consequences of some answers that you may be given or um, a part of your immigration history or whether you qualify or not. So I had one um, client that I met in person a few weeks ago and he came to see me in my office and, you know, we had a consultation. So he had applied for, yes, this is actually very, very apt. He had applied for U.S. citizenship by himself and he went to see an attorney a u.s licensed attorney but the attorney was not you know does not specialize in u.s immigration law and um the attorney checked it for him or he said according to him the attorney he, he had the attorney sign i'm not sure whether as the preparer or whatever and unfortunately for him he submitted his u.s citizenship application and it was denied he submitted the N336 again, uh, which is a request to, you know, for a rehearing, sort of like an appeal for the for a denied U.S. citizenship application. And it was denied again. And he wasted about, well, less than $2,000 in fees. But that was all money down the drain. And so when he came, I reviewed everything and realized that he had come into the country um, so he had so when you apply for u.s citizenship it has to be on one of two bases either three years being a green card holder for three years and married to a u.s citizen or you've been here for five years you know um just been a green card holder for five years he was applying on the on the basis of the fact that he had been a green card holder for five years but unfortunately for him he applied about six months short of when he was actually eligible so he was not eligible at the time of the application but eligibility is determined at the time of your application so unfortunately for him this other attorney he went to see does not practice immigration law and so could not realize that this person was not eligible to file for citizenship so that's one instance in which you need an attorney number one to see whether you qualify and then number two to see you know if there are going to be any issues or red flags okay and as i say having an attorney is like having insurance when you have it nothing bad seems to happen of course you have insurance so even if something bad happens the attorney can help you through the process but when you don't have an attorney things can go downhill really fast and then you can get in big 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 trouble you can get really screwed so um that's the first question do i need a, a lawyer to apply no you don't need it but very highly recommended okay and then the second question we get is um does uscis publish the naturalization test question so you guys know as part of the you know your your screening to become a u.s citizen you need to pass a citizenship test and um it's currently the 2008 version of the civics test so president trump in 20 it was um december 2020 he actually brought a 2020 version of the civics test uh, and that you had to answer 20 questions out of 
128 questions. You had to answer 28. So you, you were going to be asked 20 questions out of 128 test questions. So you had to study 128 test questions and you had to answer 20 and then get um, 12 correct. Um, but then thankfully, Joe Biden has reverted to the 2008 civics test. So it's back to 100 test questions. So you study 100 test questions and then you will have to answer 10 questions. Uh, well, the officer is going to be asking you 10 questions out of the 100 questions and you have to get six questions correctly. Okay, so we have George Nicolotti who has joined us who said my immigration lawyer. <laughs> Hello, happy to have you on here. I'm uh I'm going to be getting in touch with you soon. So I'll talk to you soon. Okay, and then let's continue. So we have um now we have the 20 2008 version of the civic test. So that's a much better hurdle to jump. Okay, you just have to ask, you just have to study 100 questions and you have to get six out of the 10 questions correctly. The third question we frequently get asked is, um, does the USCIS make frequent changes to the questions on the naturalization test? No, not at all. So we've had the 2008 test since forever. Okay, but it's the answers to some of these questions that frequently, well, that could change. So for example, um, you there are certain questions like okay who is the chief justice of the united states who is the current president of the united states who is your um representative who is your senator who is you know all those type of types of questions um who's a speaker of 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 um of, of the house or whatever all those types of questions change depending on you know who has been elected who has been appointed and or depending on where which state you are based which county you are based in or and all of that so the questions do not change at all but the answers um some of the answers may change due to elections or appointments so for example questions like what is the longest the name of the longest river in the united states mississippi um and there's an m1 it doesn't change okay you know the that I think there are two of them. There's Mississippi. I remember there were two M's, Mississippi and another one. That doesn't change. The longest river remains the longest river. So questions like that will not change. Like how many, um, you know, states do we have? It's 50, right? You know, is that even part of the test? But yes, I've recorded videos on, you know, the 100 tests that you'll be um, tested on, the 100 questions that you'll be tested on. So some of the questions will not change okay but some of them also will change the answers i'm sorry some of the answers to the questions will not change forgive me guys i'm just getting ahead of myself please drop me your comments i'm here drop me your comments and your questions of course relating to u.s immigration law and we'll do our best to answer them okay so um the other question is will i be asked all of the civics questions during the naturalization interview so no as i already as i already told you guys uh, for the 100 questions that you're supposed to study for you're supposed to study 100 test questions with the answers you're going to be asked 10 but by the time you get to number six if you've gotten all the answers correct then the test stops you're not going, going to be um you know <laughs> disturbed any further so please note that okay um let's talk about this other one uh let me jump here Okay, so can I legally change my name? Can I le can you yeah, can I legally change my name while my naturalization application is pending? Um and yes, you can actually so I, you know, I have I've had a number of people ask me, "Oh, I want to change my name. I'm I'm trying to file a name change in court before I apply for citizenship." No, you can actually change your name during the citizenship process. Okay, and even while your application for naturalization is pending, you can change your name at any time. When you're naturalizing, um, you know, they could ask you, they will ask you during the interview whether you want to change your name at the time of naturalization. You know, if you want to use a new name, then you will give them that new name. And normally at the time of the interview, USCIS will record the name change request. They'll ask you to sign um, a name change petition. And then USCIS... Before the judicial, um, before the judicial oath ceremony, and then uh, when they receive the petition, the court will sign and then seal the petition, and then the petition will be later presented to you during your naturalization um, ceremony as evidence of your name change. Okay, 
So that's it. Um, I have a meeting very soon, so I will have to, have to um, hop up very, very soon. So let's see. So all name change requests uh, facilitated through USCIS will require that you take an oath of allegiance at a judicial ceremony rather than an, an administrative one. So if you do it through USCIS, you will take an oath at um, oath of allegiance, okay, at a judicial ceremony. Um, that's that. You don't need to worry. All the all you need to know is that you can file a name change during your citizenship application. Okay, you can tell them the new name. So, if you want, you have a new name, you know, that you want to use. You can do that during the application. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Normally on the form, even on the N-400, you'll be asked whether you wish to change your name at the time of naturalization, and then you can give the details. You'll be given another opportunity during the interview itself, of course, if you want to change your name. Okay, so um, guys, I think that will be all. Let's see. We have uh, a budget info who says, can you apply for a motion to reopen or reconsider together? You certainly can. There's no mutually exclusive rule. So on the form I-290B, they have an option to motion to reopen, to motion to reopen, motion to reopen, and motion to cons reconsider. Okay, yeah, you can actually apply for both at the same time. But uh, remember that one of them, motion to reopen, is for, you know, when you have a um, new set of facts, and reconsider is when let me let me pull this up right here one is for when you have new sets of facts that you want to adduce to the USCIS. one is for if you want them to review the law or the policy you feel like there's a mistake in the law or the policy um reopen is usually i think for the new set of facts if there's a new set of facts so something has changed and you want them to reopen it you need to adduce you know show them that there's actually um new facts for them to consider okay so yeah it that sounds like something you you need to have an attorney re review it for you or i'll do a video on that i have to run now we have yeah i have um somebody that just walked in the office for a meeting so guys i'll see you guys soon okay take care and call me if you guys need my help have a wonderful rest of your day bye